Hi, I'm Nicholas Bell, and it's my pleasure to speak with Hun Saedi and uh, screenwriter Azad Jafarian, uh, who uh, directed and wrote World War III, which is Iran's official submission for the 95th Academy Awards in the Best International Feature category. Uh, congratulations on that. Uh, it just also won uh, Best Actor and Special Jury Prize at the Asian World Film Festival last night. Uh, and as well as a, a host of other awards at other film festivals. Uh, so congratulations. Thank you. Thank uh, you. I have to say, this is definitely one of the best films I've seen this year. I saw it uh, at Venice, where it premiered uh, in the Horizons sidebar, where it won best film. Uh, and uh, having just rewatched it, it is very impressive. Uh, and I want to talk first about the origins, how you two came together to work on the project. Uh, and I know that you wanted to make a film about the working man, but tell us about how it initially came together. I'm going to be translating for whom I'm just going to say it in Farsi. Go ahead. Okay. I'm going to say that I was about two years ago in my mind, and I wanted to say that با این کانسپت یه چیزی رو بنویسم چند نمونه در واقع کامل هم چند ورژن هم آماده کردم ولی مطمئن بودم که یه جای کار به شدت میلنگه و کار من به تنهایی نیست uh, he's had different versions of the script uh, he's, he had written it out over the past two three years um, based on the original concept but uh, he was never happy with it and he uh, realized that it's not something he could write on his own. اونجا بود که درخواست کردم از دو تا از دوستانی که چون برام خیلی کار مشترک توی فیلمنامه این تجربه رو نداشتم و برام خیلی ترسناک بود چون احساس می‌کردم که ممکن همه چیز در حقیقت یه جور دیگری پیش بره که مورد علاقه من نباشه. برای همین فکر کردم که با چه کسایی میتونم همکاری بکنم و نتیجه خوبی داشته باشه که این هم هم در هم بتونن درست نقد بکنن هم در مسیر درست کانسپت حرکت بکنن و بدونن که چی توی ذهنم میگرده و این شد که با آزاد و آریان حرف زدم و خواهش کردم که بهم بپیوندن و تونستیم این فیلم رو شروع کنیم با هم دیگه کار کرد Okay, I, I might have to summarize a little bit. Uh, he's saying that um, he uh, he had never worked with anyone uh, as a co-writer to write his previous screenplays. So he was a little bit terrified because he was worried that the film will be uh, go a different direction than what's in his mind on, on the original concept. So he thought about who he could ask to collaborate with and he uh, came across me and uh, our other uh, writing partner, Arian Vasily Daftari. And uh, he wanted this, just the right amount of criticism of the concepts and uh, veering the film towards the direction that he wanted it to go uh, to come up with uh, the final script that we ended up shooting. So that's how the collaboration started. Uh, and uh, Azed, you previously worked on About Ellie, which is a favorite film of mine by uh, Askar Farhadi. And there are elements, I, I think, of Farhadi, uh, if you're one is familiar with Iranian cinema, uh, but I'm curious about other inspirations because I, I know Human uh, with past films, people have asked about your connection to genre and film noir. Uh, if there were any films you had in mind while putting together World War III. متاسفانه شاید یه ذره این در حقیقت در ایران هنوز جا نیفتاده که آدم ها به وقتی جلوتر حرکت میکنن در سینما و به کشف و شروط میرسن لزوما همه چیز انفرادی نیست و باید توسط یک سری فیلم یک سری مصربی یک سری ادبیات تحت تأثیرش قرار بگیرن حقیقتش اینجاست که من در تمام فیلم هام همیشه تحت تاثیر یک فیلمی یا یک فیلمسازی بودم اما این بار نه به دلیل نقد های منفی که نسبت به این قضیه و که برعکسش در این اتفاق میفته خواستم تغییر ایجاد بکنم نه بیشتر بابت این که واقعا نمونه ای رو پیدا نمی کردم که نزدیک به ذهنم باشه برای همین این موضوع خیلی برام چالش بزرگتری بود خیلی به ذرس قاطع میتونم بگم تحت تاثیر 
هیچ فیلمی یا هیچ کتابی نبودم مگر کتابای تاریخی که راجع به خصوص هیتلر می‌خوندم He's saying that in his previous films, he's always been inspired by other films. And uh, unfortunately, in Iran, it's uh, looked down upon when you, you like have references to other films as though it's like you're not original enough. Mm-hmm. Uh, and in this film, he, the reason he wasn't inspired by any particular film is not because he didn't want to, because he didn't find anything that had the tone and uh, uh, that he was going for. And so he didn't find any films to be inspired by. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, so that's it. And to answer your question, because you asked me a question too about uh, reference to Farhadi. Um, yeah, for us, uh, for us, like working with Human, um, for me, it, it was very pleasurable because he's like a doer. Like he, we like the last two months of uh, rewriting the screenplay, he had already started pre-production. And we were inspired by like all the people coming in the office and like making the costumes, making the sets. And then it kind of drive the story and it inspired us to uh, work out the details of every, every little move. Uh, and uh, that was very nice for me, working with Uman. Um, it, yeah, it feels like it must have been a, a significant collaboration uh, based on the final product. Uh, there's kind of a... A, a pessimism to the film and a cynicism that you know really reminded me of films like Scarlet Street by Fritz Lang, that the period of 1940s film noir when we're really exploring bluntly uh, some of kind of human realities. Uh, I like that you begin with a quote from Mark Twain that's attributed to Mark Twain about how history never repeats itself, but it often rhymes. And the film feels kind of like a poem to me uh, where it begins and ends. Uh, your cinematographer you've worked with before, Payman uh, Shadmanfar. Tell me about the shoot. How long did this take, uh, considering you're making a film about a film as well? Yes, that was a matter of fact, 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 و واقعا اون نوا و اون نقمه رو به فیلم میده و کاری رو با فیلم در لحظه آخر میکنه نگار که مثلا من یه فیلمی ساختم که بدون اون جمله به نظرم یه چیز بزرگ و کم داره اون خودش یه فیلم بسیار بزرگه که میاد و فیلم من رو کامل میکنه نمیدونم فیلم من بدون اون جمله اصلا چه اتفاق براش میفته Uh, the, the, uh, yeah, the quote by Mark Twain, it was a godsend. Like when uh, he discovered it or came across it, uh, he realized it's, uh, the, it was the missing piece. It's what completes the film in a, in a way, uh, as though the film without that quote uh, might not work. Uh, so he's very <laughs> excited to uh, have stumbled upon it and have it uh, open the film. و در مورد پیمان شادمان فر به در این که سوال رو کامل بکنم باید بگم که خب خیلی چیزها هست که فقط آدم هایی که متخصص در سینما هستن متوجهش میشن شاید چیزهای معمول و سخت در سینما باشن ولی به وقتی باعث توقف در روند رسیدن به هدفت میشن دیگه یه چالش بزرگ به حساب میاد مثلا ما هیچ وقت فکر نمی کردیم برای اینکه بتونیم این پلان سکانس ها رو بگیریم ممکنه زمین زمینی که روش را میریم برای یه داستان بزرگ درست کنه چون اونجا به شدت بارندگی بود و تقریبا تا ساق پا توی گل میرفتیم و حرکت کردن با دوربین روی دست یه کار فاجعه ای بود که واقعا هم زمان بر بود هم خیلی قضیه رو سخت میکرد و واقعا اگه همکاری پیمان نبود و رو پیدا کردن راه حل مناسب نبود نمیدونستم چه اتفاقی میفته چون مسیر طول حرکتمون نیمت یک متر نبود خیلی مواقع میشد که خیلی باید حرکت میکردیم و امکانی رو نداشتیم همه جا رو بخواییم درست کنیم <تصفيق> And in regards to working with Payman Shadman Far, which he has always done uh, with most of his recent films, uh, there are things that you can't plan in the, in the, when you're writing the film. Uh, like, for example, they wanted to shoot a lot of the uh, one shots, like where the camera just follows the action for four minutes, five minutes straight. But not realizing that the ground they walk on might not be the most stable ground because the ground... Uh, on the set was like uh, covered with mud and he would be stepping all the way like knee deep in, in mud and then having to follow the actors and follow the actions uh, with a handheld heavy camera 
uh, was something that not everyone uh, could uh, could do, and Paymon uh, was able to pull this off. And uh, kudos to him for that. The the confrontation scene in the mud uh, is very impressive. And I was that done. How many takes did that particular scene take? Um, ما حتما دلم میخواست که بارون مصنوعی ندیم و دلم میخواست همه چی توی بارون طبیعی و رئال اتفاق بیفته چون خیلی داشتم تلاش میکردم که طول فیلم پرهیز کنم از هر نوع ویژوال و هر عامل کمک کننده در صحنه که رئالیت مخدوش نشه واسه همین در حقیقت اون رو ما تو دو, دو روز گرفتیم و من همش دعا میکردم که پی، یعنی پیش بینی هوا درست بوده باشه و تو این دو روز در حقیقت ما بتونیم با این تداوم راکورد ادامهش رو بگیریم تیک اصلی د... یعنی دعوا چون این بچه ها هر بار طول دعوا رو میرفتن اینطور نبود که پلان به پلان بگیریم و مقطع مقطع بگیریم و من اونجا تنها جایی بود که در حقیقت دوربین رو مجبور بودم قاط بزنم و اتفاقات ناگواری هم افتاد خلاصه بارندگی آب تو دوربینه و همه چی دست به دست هم دیگه میداد که ما رو مانع این بشه که بتونیم پلان رو بگیریم ولی ولی خلاصه شد شاید شاید اون باید اعتراف کنم که اون سکانس یا یکی دو تا از سکانس های دیگه هنوز جوری نیستن که من دلم میخواسته به خاطر اینکه تسلیم شرایط آب و هوا شدم و شاید به لحظاتی به خاطر بازی و لحظه بازی بازیگران شاید از خودم گذاشتم و فکر کردم بهتره که کوتاه بیام و اصرای نداشته باشم و اصالت رو پیدا بکنم تا اینکه فکر بکنم همه چیز به نفع من تمام شده یا نه alright i definitely have to summarize that Uh, basically, um, he's saying that the fight scene uh, was one of the things, the scenes that he had a really difficult time shooting because uh, they would go through the whole fight uh, uh, for every take. And because he always insisted on shooting on actual rain day, uh, rainy days because he didn't want to have any artificial uh, rain on set, um, they, they had to like organize it with like the weather report uh, and shoot on a rainy day. That particular scene took two days uh, to be able to pull off. And by the end, it's like one of the only scenes where he ended up having uh, cuts uh, in the middle or like cutting to different takes because uh, he wasn't happy with what he got. And, and maybe he um, uh, was like one of the only couple of uh, scenes where he had to let go of what was original in his mind because uh, he had to make compromises to make it work uh, for the script. Uh, but after two days of like having a go at that uh, scene and going through the whole process, um that's that's how i ended up doing and i'll add something that paymon uh, said at asian world film festival i'm mean, going to ask about the same scene he said that he didn't want to be present for any of the rehearsals with the actors because he wanted to be surprised by the action with the camera so paymon would come in after the rehearsal after rehearsals and then just follow the action based on what was happening to keep that uh, documentary feel alive I, I mean, it, it, it's very impressive, uh, the whole film, but that, that scene in particular. Um, one of my favorite parts in the script is, is actually at the very beginning when uh, Shakib is talking, he's telling the story to Ladan about the puppies that are yep. milking from the dead mother. And of, of course, it makes me think that's the metaphor for the human race, that the world has kind of died, but we're still sucking out the sustenance. Uh, would you say that is it how difficult is it to make a film this pessimistic in Iran and would you be able to make it today? ببین بله سخت خواهد بود ولی خوب متاسفانه در واقع حقیقت و حقیقت تلخ و جامعه ایران و مردم ایران همیشه از این نوع فیلم ها حمایت کردن به دلیل که درد مشترکی وجود داره در بین اونها و فیلم هایی که میبینن من به نظرم اشکالی نداره فیلم تلخ باشه مهمترین نکتش اینجاست که وقتی تو در جان حرکت کنی و فیلمی رو میخوای بر برای جامعه بسازی حتما باید نزدیکتر به واقعیت بشی حتی اگر قرار سمبولیکتر رفتار بکنی حتی اگر قراره که با نشانه های سینمایی بیشتری رو برو بشی باید جوری باشون حرف بزنی که اونها و جامعه تو باهاش احساس همزاد پنداری بکنی ساختن این نوع فیلم ها ممکنه واکنش هایی رو داشته باشه چون فیلم فیلم خیلی تلخ و ناراحت کننده ای ولی بعضی اوقات هم آدم ها فکر میکنن که شاید من در ذهنم این چیزها به وجود 
اینقدر دارک میبینم زندگی رو پرسیدی که اصلا برای من به این شکل نیست و تلاش میکنم که ببینم تو جامعه هم داره چه اتفاق میفته uh, a lot of times the films uh, are a reflection of the pessimism that already exists in uh, uh, our society and if, if we are to make films for the people uh, of our country then you want to speak to them with their own language we have this common pain that we have to somehow capture and uh, uh, put on film so that, that's the challenge of us as uh, filmmakers to be able to uh, to do that and people have tended to uh, side with these kind of films or to have a connection or to relate uh, to them um, so uh, the pessimism a lot of it comes from the world uh, around us not necessarily from uh, my or human's personal uh, beliefs about what life is like or should be like in Iran uh, yes it's difficult to um, make these films but uh, we'll always find a way uh, to make them because that's our duty to uh, capture the moment if you will yeah yeah um in closing i guess we need to give a shout out to uh, Mohsen Ten Tenenbaum his performance i mean is exceptional uh, at what point was he approached to play shakib قبل از اینکه در واقع این جواب بدم خیلی دلم میخواد به ایشون بگم که ازشون ممنونم چون تا الان و تا این لحظه با همه مصاحبه‌ای که کردم هیچ کس به سکانس اولم دقت نکرده بود و این خیلی برای من جالبه چون میدونم که با مقاومت زیادی از جمله فکر می‌کنم حتی خودت رو در سمت نویسنده روبرو شده سکان سکانس درستی نیست از این بابت خیلی خوشحالم First of all, before he answers the question about Mohsen, he says that he's very happy that in all the interviews we've done since Venice, uh, no one had pointed out the first scene and, uh, and the discussion that took place and a lot of people were against it, including me maybe at some point <laughs> as his co-writer, because <laughs> we weren't sure how well it will sit with the film. So he's happy that you pointed that out and uh, you like, seem to like that scene. I, I liked it. I was immediately in uh, with that that story. <laughs> I was very intrigued with where does this fit? How does it mean? And I think it's powerful. And the other point is that Rajiv Mohsen, I have a habit that I have from the fact that I'm in a situation where I'm trying to write something and I'm trying to write something and I'm trying to write something and I'm trying to write something. کاراکتر توی جلوی تصویر توی ذهنم جلوی چشمم باشه و بر اساس اون بنویسم و برم جلو و نمیدونم که اگه یعنی بزرگترین کابوسم هم اینه که اگه وای بازیگر برم جلو و اون لحظه آخر بگه نمیام آیا من دوباره قراره دوباره همین چیزو بازسازی بازنویسی بکنم یا نه برای همین خیلی زودتر از این حرفا شاید 6 7 ماه حداقل قبل از اینکه در واقع حتی بیشتر یک یک سال قبل نه نه نه, نه. 6 7 ماه قبل با محسن حرف زدم محسن در واقع با هم دست داد بدون که فیلم ها رو بخونه و رفت و در واقع تو یه ذره راجع به سوژه باش حرف زدم به شدت لاغر کرد تا جایی که تونست و به ما پیوست he says it's maybe a weakness in him that when he's writing or sets out to make a film he has to imagine the actor playing it uh, and then he one of his biggest fears is like uh, developing a film based on an actor and then having that actor not be able to do the film at the last second because he doesn't know how if he would he would be able to make that film and this was no exception and he six or seven months before uh, he even started working on his film he went approached Mohsen and talked to him and uh, without reading the script they just shook hands and he agreed to do the film um, and uh, he started losing weight for the part uh, and then they took it from there. So he's very lucky that Mohsen was able to uh, be part of the film because he was always thought of for the role of Shakib. Yeah, I, I, I assumed you might have written it for him based on how well uh, everything fits together in his performance. Mm -hmm. But um, thank you both for taking the time to speak with me today. Uh, and mm -hmm. I, anybody who hasn't seen this film yet is in for you know a, a, a big treat, I think. Um, and I guess I'd, I want to close with another quote from the infinitely quotable Hannah Arendt, who you have in your director statement about how in dictatorships, everything goes well up until the last 15 minutes. <laughs> and I think that uh, is also in, the spirit of that is encapsulated in this film. Uh, thank you both very much. Thank okay. you so much. Thank you. Hey, this is Eric from MyOnCinema.com. If you want to support us, subscribe below.
For more reviews, interviews, film festival coverage from Sundance, Cannes, Toronto, you want to check out these guys on this side.